afternoon, Jets Nation. Welcome aboard New York Jets News. I'm your host, Jude Jets, and today we're going over all the Jets news that has happened in the last 24 hours. Before we get started, again, please actually hit the subscribe button. If you are new, follow me on social media, Jude underscore Jets on Instagram and Twitter. Links are also down below in the description. Check this video like if you end up enjoying. So for our first story today, we're talking about Morgan Moses. So according to Jeremy Fowler and Stadium, the Jets are among multiple teams that remain interested in free agent offensive tackle Morgan Moses. Moses visited New York and Chicago in recent weeks. Teams have made strides in potentially signing him, but no decision has been made. And U, U Stadium also has said that Moses plans on visiting with one more team before making a decision on where he's going to play. Now, personally, I believe the New York Jets are the front runners for Moses because he has visited us. We are set to be better than Chicago. Chicago, we can offer him a better contract, and who doesn't want to play in New York City, the biggest sports market in the NFL, and in the world, New York City is the biggest sports market in the world, and who doesn't want to play there with Robert Sala as your head coach? Um, so yeah, New York Jets are most definitely the front runners to sign Morgan Moses, but in Sala's latest press conference, he said that the signing is going to be up to Joe Douglas, and you know, Douglas really likes George Fant, so I was like, well, if Douglas really likes fans, I don't know if he's going to sign Moses, but with Mekhi Becton's foot injury, I think signing Moses is now more important than ever. Because, yeah, the Jets have said that he's not going to need surgery and he's going to be ready for training camp. But what if he accidentally re-injures it and the injury becomes worse and he's not going to play this season? Or he's not going to be available for many games? And that Connor McDermott is going to be our starting tackle. I just wouldn't want that to happen. So if we sign Moses, you know, we can just create a little flexibility on that offensive line. And if Becton does get hurt, we can just shift Fan over to his spot. And our offensive line is not going to be as bad as it would be with a backup in Becton's place. And let's go over a little recap of today's OTA practice. So who wasn't there? Chris Herndon and players, I'm assuming, weren't there because no one said they were back, include Alex Lewis, Marcus May, and Jameson Crowder. Um, Makai Becton did not practice, and players that were in the trainer's area include Lawrence Cager, who has a hamstring injury, Corey Davis, who has a minor shoulder strain, plus Young Austin, Jonathan Marshall, full of Fadikusi, and Blake Cashman. And who wouldn't have guessed Cashman would be in the trainer's area? The guy is always hurt, and I wonder what it was this time. Um, and let's go over the top performers of today. So, Zach Wilson and Elijah Moore stole the show. They had this beautiful 40-yard bomb connection. Zach Wilson threw it to Elijah Moore, who was running down the sideline. Moore jumped up and caught it, or jumped out and caught it. You know, absolutely beautiful throw. That's what all the beat reporters were saying. You know, easily the highlight of OTAs. That's what everyone was saying. So glad the two are making plays and just look good together. And ultimately, they also had another touchdown today, and they've just been making great plays all throughout OTAs. So super excited and knew that Zach Wilson and Elijah Moore are starting to become a great duo. Um, Keelan Cole and Braxton Berrios also had a nice day and ultimately have been having a nice OTA. Gerard Davis was the best defensive player today. He had a pass deflection that almost turned into a pick six. And the defense was bad today. The offense killed it, and throughout OTAs, the offense just has been killing it, and maybe that's because the Jets' cornerbacks have not been playing good. I'm against adding a veteran corner because it takes away reps from the young corners, and those reps are really crucial in terms of their development, but if the corners continue to play like this, we might have no choice at all to add a veteran cornerback, unless we don't want to win games. Well, that's all the news I have for you guys today. If you end up enjoying, make sure to hit this video with a subscribe and like. Follow me on social media, Junior Score Jets on Instagram and Twitter. Comment below your lower thoughts on today's news and today's video. And if for some reason the comments are turned off, hit me up on my social medias. Well, I'm your host, Juliet, signing off for now. See you later.